This episode is brought to you by Honda. When you test drive the all-new Prologue EV, there's a lot that can impress you about it. There's the class-leading passenger space, the clean, thoughtful design, and the intuitive technology. But out of everything, what you'll really love most is that it's a Honda. Visit honda.com slash EV to see offers. At BlueNile.com, you can find endless ways to make your moments sparkle. From classic and timeless jewelry gifts to creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams. All at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. And right now, you can save up to 40% on fine jewelry and 25% on engagement ring settings during the Blue Nile Anniversary Sale going on now. Go to BlueNile.com to shop the Blue Nile Anniversary Sale and save up to 40%. That's BlueNile.com. This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Hello and welcome to 1865, the Nottingham Forest podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Toplitz. It's Friday the 23rd of August and it's time for your Friday Five. We're a week into the new season and with the transfer window moving ever closer to closing, there's been plenty of speculation and news around Forest over the past seven days. So let's get into it and see what people have been talking about. I am joined for this week's Friday Five by the Maradona of the Midlands. Welcome, Maradona. Hi, Stephen. And now it's over to Jamie Martin for the rundown of our top five forest stories this week. Hi, this is Jamie Martin welcoming you back with this week's top five forest stories from the 1865 News Desk. Now the headline to this week's news, Forest have agreed to a deal to sell club captain Joe Worrell and it has now been confirmed by both clubs. Since arriving at Nottingham Forest back in 2011, Joe Worrell has featured in hundreds of games at a pro level and youth level, 200 of those in the first team. After his entire career spent with Forest, with the occasional loan including to Super League side Besiktas last season, Worrell will now embark on the next step of his career, a permanent move to Scott Parker's Burnley. Earlier in the week, news broke of the Clarets' interest in the English centre-back via social media platform X. It is now understood that such interest, which appears to have been long-standing before Forest promotion, is at an advanced stage with the deal, as I mentioned earlier, now actually done. In those 200-plus appearances for Forest, Worrell featured in, in iconic games, cup wins, beating the big boys in both cup and sooner league, and of course the promotion back to the top division. A moment he was captain for, for the club he loves and grew up supporting. All of us at the 1865 podcast wish Joe well in what is next and for the rest of his career and what's next with Burnley. Now in transfer news, Nottingham Forest have made their next signing, Alex Moreno. In an initial loan deal, Nottingham Forest have signed Alex Moreno from Aston Villa in their pursuit of a new left-sided fullback. After initially attempting to sign the Spanish left-back in 2022, Forrest have finally captured their man, Alex Moreno, joining Aston Villa from Real Betis. Moreno caught the eyes of Villa fans for his progressive outlook and astute defending. However, a hamstring injury caused him to lose form. Eventually, the presence of Lucas Dean and a later addition of Ian Matson made his position untenable. He now joins Forrest until the end of the season on loan. Forrest are understood to have a buy option for the Spaniard who is 31 this year, but the terms remain unknown. Now, the third piece of news this week, Forrest pursue two new strikers. This week, the news has been largely captivated by the news of Forrest transfer doings. Final star Santiago Jimenez and Arsenal's Eddie Nketiah are two priority targets for Nottingham Forest in the closing stages of this transfer window, with the club seeking a reliable goal scorer in the common absence of Tyler Wanyi and ageing Chris Wood. Now, journalists from the UK and abroad say Jimenez is valued at around £35 to £40 million by the Dutch side, with Arsenal wanting around £30 million for their academy product, and Ketia, who now looks to further his career and get game time. Jimenez is not understood to be against staying at Feyenoord, but a lucrative offer for himself and indeed the club could pry him away. However, Forrest will only get one of these targets, should everything go well. More to come very soon, though, in Forrest's eager chase for a new frontman. 
Now this weekend, Nottingham Forest will face Southampton. In this weekend's Premier League fixture, Forest's second of the season, the Reds face the Saints in a clash down south. Forest last played Southampton in a 4-3 thriller at the City Ground almost two years ago, with James Ward-Prowse causing nightmares for the hearts of Forest fans late into the game. But ultimately, Forest would take all three points. Now promoted, Southampton will be hoping to stay in the division and for Forest aiming to move higher in the table and take all three points from St Mary's this weekend. It is unclear as to whether Ilanga or Ola Aina will feature. Moreno is available and Danilo, unfortunately, is out until November. Now Moreno, while being registered and available to play, we're not sure at the moment currently whether he will start or just get minutes off the bench. But nonetheless, he is registered with a potential to feature. And the last part of this week's news, Forrest are unlikely to re-sign Gonzalo Montiel. After speculation amongst South American journalists, Forest fans were quick to be alerted of Gonzalo Montiel's potential return to the club after a loan spell from Sevilla last season. Montiel, 27, had an option to buy clause in his loan deal worth around £10 million last season, but Forrest opted not to activate it, later signing Eric de Silva Moreira from St Pauli, a possible depth option for Nico Williams or on the right wing. However, after speculation about the Argentinian returning to Trent's side permanently, the Athletic have been con- quick to shut down such news, insisting that any return would be unlikely. Forrest recently signed Alex Moreno on loan from Aston Villa and it would be highly unlikely for the Reds to move for another fullback in this summer window. Well, that is the latest from the 1865 News Desk. I'm Jamie Martin. Be sure to catch up with me on Twitter or X as it's now known via at I'm Jamie Martin. Updates on Nottingham Forest related news throughout the week. Thank you, Jamie. So, as we were saying, Maradona, it's quite a transfer heavy time for Forest, as it is for many other clubs, with the transfer window coming close to slamming shut, as they say on Sky Sports News. And let's have a look at that top story then. So it's involving Joe Worrell and Burnley agreeing a deal with Forrest to sign the central defender. Um, I must admit, it's going to be sad to see Joe leave. I know he's not been part of the first team at Forrest now for a little while, but he played such a big part in helping Forrest get promoted in... 2022 he was captain for many years and 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 I always saw gave his all when he when he was in the Garibaldi red um and I think Forest loss is going to be Burnley's gain yeah I think I think so too it's um him being out of the picture has has sort of made the idea a bit more palatable and sort of got let let's get used to the idea of not being uh, not him not being around um but it's 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 a sad sight to see um, a player like Joe Worrell, so that warrior captain of ours, a leader, uh, being on the sidelines and not being an automatic starter. Um, so I'm happy for him that he can he can get a move and get his career back on track again and start playing. And it's a <coughs> sorry, excuse me, and it's a decent level as well. Uh, Burnley at this early stage of the season look like they're going to walk the championship. Um, and so he'll be back in the Premier League next season. Um, but yeah, he's been a great servant for us. Um, I think I'm fairly maligned at times. It's, uh, he can only play to his strengths. And, and you know, he's, he's, he's a good all-round centre-back. He's good in the air. He was tall. He was tough. to make a tackle. Um, I think we'll all, always remember that time he, he tried to tackle the Leicester player in that FA Cup game with his head. Uh, where, yeah. where others <laughs> others would be to go in with their feet, he was just uh, just went straight in there, and I kind of had a typical of him. If I remember correctly, he'd come back from injury uh, to to play in that game. So that that fighting spirit and that sort of part of um, being a Nottingham Forest fan um, was an important part of that promotion. Um, he made his mark pretty early on. So I remember when he did that post match interview, and he was just a young kid into the team. And Forrest were pretty terrible at the time. And he called out his uh, more senior teammates. And I think that endeared us all uh, him to all the Forest fans at the time. So, yeah, it's a sad loss. And maybe, I think, this leaves us a bit short in the centre centre half uh, department because um, we've got the two uh, young guys we brought in last season, uh, Amboli and uh, Milenkovic. 
But apart from that, there's can't think of anybody else off the top of my head who we've got in that position now. And um, Bolly's not the most reliable in terms of injury. So I wonder if it leaves the door open for another signing in that position for us. Yeah. Um, when, when you factor in Omabamadeli, Murillo, Bolly and Milenkovic, and Milenkovic is very new to the club, um, perhaps it does deplete our centre-half resources a little bit. But like you say, we were used to, to Joe Worrell not being in the Forest team. And last season, he went on loan in the second half of the campaign to Turkish side Besiktas. And it, it looked then that his days at Forest were numbered. Um, and that has proven to be the case. He's undergoing a medical at Burnley and is expected to sign a four-year deal with Scott Parker's side. And at the age of 27, they're actually getting him at a good period of his career. You would think now he, he, he'll be entering his peak and having already had that promotion behind him with Forrest, from Burnley's point of view, I'd be very happy to see a player like him come into my club. Yeah, he's, he's absolutely ideal for um, an ambitious ambitious championship club. And, but, I mean, I thought the move to Burnley had gone once uh, Sean Dyche had left there because he was, he was heavily linked to them uh, when we were still in the championship. And we were talking at fees about £12 million in those days uh, for a championship player. Um, so yeah, the 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 move has finally come come to fruition, um, and yeah, as you say, he's he, he's got to be a better player for the, having the experience in the Premier League in the last couple of years. Apart from just being a little bit lacking in pace, he's really got everything he needs as, as a centre half. Um, it's just a it's just a pity that I think once once those mistakes got into the minds of of the hierarchy at Boris and some of the fans, it's always going to be difficult for him to stay around and be the first choice pick um and especially now that we've we've brought in uh, uh such sort of as high profile players as we have in the last year or two um you can't spend that sort of money on players and just have them sitting on the bench it's it's um it's a truism where where you, your homegrown players are always going to get pushed out and i suppose the old um what's it called psr as it is now yeah um, Joe being a homegrown player and us getting a transfer fee for him is invaluable now, as we've all sort of sadly come to accept about modern day football. Um, it's, it seems counterintuitive to us all, um, and it's a bit, a bit, a bit of uh, a topsy turvy thinking to get your head around. But yeah, the, the, the best thing for the club is for the, for the homegrown players to go. Um, and it's not something I ever thought would would happen in football is it's, uh, it's just uh, shows the sort of crazy world we're living in now in terms of uh the finances and the regulations and, and and modern day football and it does mean that ryan yates is the only member of that playoff winning team and homegrown forest player from that team more specifically who is still at the club with brennan johnson and now joe worrell moving on over the the course of the last 12 months. So one defender is leaving Forest, but another one has come in. We're talking about our second story now, and that is Forest signing Alex Moreno on loan from Aston Villa for the rest of the season with the option for a permanent deal after that. He's a 31-year-old Spanish left-back. He'd fallen behind New signing Ian Matson and Lucas Dina in the pecking order at Villa Park. He'd previously been linked with Forrest in, I seem to remember, our first season back in the Premier League um, before he joined Villa. That was in January 2023. He cost them £13.2 million at the time. And he was actually Unai Emery's first signing at Villa. Um, he played 21 times for them last season as they finish fourth and qualified for the Champions League. He's got plenty of experience in La Liga on top of that. Um, what do you think, Maradona? I think it's a good signing on the basis of left-back is a position that Forrest have needed to strengthen in, and it looks like Moreno is is going to be a good fit. Yeah, um, it's a position we've looked weak in uh, for the past past couple of seasons. Um, the fact that Harry Toffolo, as, as good a player as he is, um, 
is our really only left-footed player who can play there now, it seems, um, was a cause for concern. Because he, as, as, good a, as good a player as he is, he's spent the vast majority of his career in the lower, lower reaches of the football pyramid. Um, and I think relying on him at Premier League level um, was uh, a big ask. Um, I've, I've, I've got to be honest, I, I do remember him turning us down and going to Villa and I've, I've, I've been a bit against him ever since then. I've, uh, whenever I've seen him on Match of the Day or playing for Villa on TV, I've always sort of, sort of uh, looked at him with daggers. Uh, so it, it's a bit of an odd feeling now to welcome, back to, welcome him to Forest. Um, but yeah, he's a good player. He's uh, good going forwards. He's good defensively. He's quick. He's experienced. Uh, he's naturally left-footed. So all those things should help help Forrest um, progress this season. I mean, it gives us that little bit of balance on that side. As good as Ola Ina was towards the end of last season, it's, it's, it's always going to be uh, a bit restrictive having a right-footed player playing at, at left-back. Um, so, yeah, all in all, um, also considering that it's a loan signing, we don't have to pay a, a transfer fee as such at the moment. It's, it's a really good signing, a, a clever bit of business uh, from the recruitment team. And with Forrest's squad depth having been a problem for a while, I think being able to bring in somebody of Moreno's experience will be will be good. And he's a he's a natural left footer to play out there, and we imagine he will move up ahead of Harry Tofflow in the in the pecking order now at Forrest. And he's a player that has got some Premier League experience as well, so. I think on the whole, like you say, it's it's, it's quite a smart move and, a, and a, a decent bit of business. And we'll wait to see how he does on loan and whether Forrest decide in time to make the transfer permanent. Hello, it is Ryan. And we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. You're listening to 1865 The Nottingham Forest Podcast. So our third story and it's even more transfer news, relates to Forrest's search for a new striker. So it looks like the club are keen to bring in a new frontman. A number of names have been mentioned, the main two being Edin Ketia at Arsenal and Santiago Jimenez at Feyenoord. And depending on which sources you believe, it looks like Eddie Ketia will come to Forrest but then he won't come to Forest, and then again he will come to Forest. It's been an ongoing transfer over the past week or so, um, with Forest now reportedly having offered a deal worth £30 million to Arsenal for Nketia. Um Doesn't look at the moment like a deal has been agreed, but it's believed that Nketia is moving closer to exiting the Emirates Stadium. And it looks like Nketia is Forrest's first option that they want to sign. He's 25 years old, spent the entirety of his career with Arsenal, apart from half a season on loan at Leeds in the 2019-20 season. He has scored 38 goals for Arsenal in 168 appearances and has only made 38 Premier League starts. So this is perhaps where there could be an element of risk over the deal. Um, he's very much been a squad player at Arsenal and sort of filled in up front, either as a substitute or covering for injuries. So he's not really been able to establish himself as a first choice. And it looks like he is keen to move on and try and do that with another club. It looks like that club might well be Forest if a deal can be agreed. What are your thoughts on on this move and, and potentially Eddie and Ketia coming to the city ground. Well but I mean if looking at looking at him from afar if, if Forrest weren't involved I'd say that he'd make a good middle of the table uh, team uh, a decent striker as a team like Bournemouth, Crystal Palace, 
Brentford. So it seems like that sort of um, position of the table. You can see him going there, playing week in, week out. I'm getting about 12, 13, 14 goals in a Premier League season. Um, and if we're brutally honest, that's sort of pretty much where Forrest are aspiring to be. Um, so just looking at a logical way, no, no sort of um, emotion attached, um, Forrest not involved. If a club's in that sort of position, it'd be a decent enough signing. So if we want to be in that position, on that, on that basis, he would be a decent enough signing. However, um, the transfer fee really worries me. I think I, th- I thought twenty million plus five million add-ons was really top end uh, for him and his abilities. Um, I'd, I'd be really reluctant to. I mean, if, if the deal's like thirty million pounds, they're saying, I, I'd be really reluctant to uh, push that one over the line. Um, a couple. I mean, only a couple of years ago, we were wondering whether he'd be good enough even for the championship. I saw him at Leeds be completely ineffectual while on loan there. And he did some good things for Arsenal in sort of League Cup games and things. Uh, but has, as you say, he's been most being used as a sub there. And um, I, don't, I don't think he's better. He's, I don't think he's a better finisher than Chris Wood. And I don't think he's a better all-round striker than Ta- uh, Taiwo. So for me, if he was coming in, he'd, just purely on ability grounds, he'd be the third choice striker. But if he's coming in on that sort of money, he's got to play. There's no way we can spend thirty million pounds on a on a player and have him sitting on the bench and coming on every five so for the last five ten minutes of games, um, every other game. So I'm a bit I'm a bit conflicted by this. Um, I, I don't. I, I mean, if you give him enough chances, he will score. But he's he's not a clinical striker. He'll take three or four chances sometimes to get one goal. I'm playing for a club like Arsenal. He has plenty of chances. They, they're creating chances left, right, and centre. At Forest, we're, we're not very we're not very creative. Let's be honest. I hope he's lucky if he gets uh, two chances in a game. Um, so yeah, if he's playing every week for us, as I say, a mid-table team, he'll probably get a dozen goals. Um, and that's prob- maybe that's okay for a, a 20, 25 million pound striker, but 30 million pounds. When we've already got Tywo at the club and we've got Chris Wood at the club, I, I, it doesn't make much sense to me um, on that level. But, but based purely on finance, if he was coming in for fifteen million pounds or with five million pounds add-ons, I'd say go ahead all day long, make the deal. This just sounds a bit too expensive to me now, and I, I worry about it. If I was to put a positive spin on it, I'd say that Enketia is the kind of striker that we don't have at the club. We haven't got abundance of pace up front well in central striking areas if you if you discount the wings we don't have a lot of pace and probably not a lot of mobility up there and that those are things that Enketia does bring and there'll be certain scenarios in games where I think those those attributes will be a real strength and we are probably a more counter-attacking team than Arsenal so on that basis I think he would fit in at, at Forest much better um, the other, the other plus, if you like, is that he seems to be a profile of player that Forest have been targeting recently with with some success. When you think of players like Callum Hudson Odoi, Anthony Alanga, these sort of younger younger players with room to develop who have been at bigger clubs and haven't been able to establish themselves and and really make that proper breakthrough they've come to forest and, and shown themselves to, to have real quality and, and real ability. So if I was looking at it on that basis as well, I'd say that Enketia could come in and have something to offer. Would you agree? I do, I do agree. But the difference between uh, Hudson Adoy and Elanga was the transfer fees. It, it was, they were, they were low, low fees. Um, so the, it wasn't much of a gamble to bring them in. If a club the size of Forest with the current PSR rules brings in a player for 25, 30 million pounds, he has to make an impact week in, week out. He, there's no there's no if, buts or maybes about it. We can't have um, a player, even even Alanga and Hudson Odoi, they, they're not producing every single week. It's in fits and starts, but because they didn't cost very much, you can forgive them for that. It's because they haven't played much recently in recent years, injury problems. Um, through youth, uh, being at big clubs, 
you forgive them that and you and you give them the chance to establish themselves at, at forest but if i'm if i'm spending that money if i'm spending 30 million pounds of forest money i want somebody who's guaranteed to score goals um and is is there is pretty much a finished article i, I just um I know, I know it's not a lot of money in terms of, of uh, modern day transfer fees for a striker. They just having seen him play. I mean, a lot of the times you can't argue with with Forest transfers because, quite frankly, I've never heard of the players they sign. I've never seen them play because they're coming from Argentinian football, uh, Portuguese football, wherever. Um, the the odd few players that I have heard of, I, I can comment on. And so in Ketty, I have seen him play quite a lot, and I, and I just don't think he's He's somebody you can hang your hat on um, and rely on at that sort of level. Um, in in that respect, I said last week on we're talking about Jimenez, it's a lot of money to risk on somebody who's coming from Holland. Thirty million pounds, I wouldn't pay that much for somebody from Holland. But at least there, you've got that mystery factor of well, maybe he is that good and he can fulfil that potential. Having seen Nketiah play, I'm not sure if, even if, even after two three seasons he's going to be a thirty million pound player. I hope I'm wrong, uh, and I hope he comes in and scores tons and tons and tons of goals. But just it's just a worry for me, just having seen him play down the years. I just I, I don't I wouldn't spend that much money on him. Well, we'll wait and see if Forrest do. Looking at the other name linked, Santiago Jimenez, he has reportedly been subject to a second bid from Forrest to Feyenoord for his services. Um, according to Fabrizio Romano, Forrest had an initial twenty-five million pound or twenty-five million euro bid rejected on Monday. They've now upped that to thirty million. And despite the fact he's two years younger than Anketia, he does feel like more of a proven player when you look at his record. Fifty-three goals in eighty-nine appearances for Feyenoord. He's been one of the best strikers in the Eredivisie in recent years. And he has played a number of times also for the Mexican national team. So I'd, in a way, even though he's never played Premier League football before, I'd almost have more confidence of Jimenez coming in and, and having more of an impact than Nketiah would. Yeah, I've just, I mean, just uh, since he's been linked to Forrest, I've sort of looked at the odd, odd YouTube video of him. And he it, it certainly has a bit more stature about him. Uh, than um, in Ketia. I must have watched him play because I've, I've, I've watched final play uh, in European football the last couple of years, but I've no memory of him playing or or, or any any of the uh, any of the uh, final players at the time. But um, yeah, it's just it's just that potential you, you're getting with a, a player who who hasn't played in the Premier League. There's that 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 mystery of well, well maybe he can, maybe he can translate it to English football maybe because he's played international football maybe he can kick on uh, and do 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 well here it's just it's just we we don't have uh, an infinite amount of money not not because our owners can't afford it it's just down to the rules so then we just have to be really careful it just both of these signings potential signings look like a bit of a gamble um and it's fine if they pay off, but if not, we've got a thirty million pound hole in in our PSR budget, and we're going to be scrambling around trying to trying to get offload people uh, this time next year. Um, and just uh, I don't know, I don't know. It sounds like a lot of money for both of them would maybe potentially just be third choice strikers, um, unless unless they've got a move lined up for Tywell already that we don't know about, which which may may well be the case. I don't know. Yeah, still a long way to go in the transfer window. We'll wait and see on what Forest do with their firepower position and whether players will leave or players will come in. Let's now go on to our next story and we're looking ahead to Saturday's game away to Southampton. So Forest's second Premier League match of the season it's away at St Mary's to newly promoted Southampton. They returned to the Premier League at the first attempt, having gone down in 22-23. Now, as we know, Forrest drew 1-1 with Bournemouth on Saturday, while 
Southampton lost 1-0 at Newcastle despite having an extra man after Fabian Scher was sent off for a clash with Ben Brereton Diaz. So Forrest go into this match actually being able to make a little bit of history. Having beaten Burnley and Sheffield United in their final two away fixtures of last season, they now could win three straight Premier League games on the road for the first time since 1995. And it does feel like going to St Mary's and a newly promoted team would be a good opportunity to do that. How are you feeling, Maradona? Are you, are you confident or a little bit more ha- apprehensive? Yeah, I think there's a level of apprehension there because if you remember, OK, Southampton haven't been away for as long as we were. But when a promoted team comes back up and it's the first home game um, of the season, the crowd's going to be well up for it. The team's going to be well up for it. There's going to be a raucous atmosphere down there. Um, but on paper, we've got a better team. Um, so you've, you've got to, you've got to, you know, just trust in your players, trust, trust in your system um, and hope that they can uh, beat the crowd, beat, beat the atmosphere and play their own game. Um, I think it's going to be a, um, have to be a disciplined performance. Southampton, uh, under Russell Martin, are uh, a possession-based team playing out from the back, no matter what. Is is that? So we, I, I suspect uh, the press is going to be key here. It's going to need um, a coordinated, disciplined press from all our front players. Everybody know doing their jobs properly. I'm sure they would have been going through it all week in training, watching videos. Then if he goes there, you go there. He goes there, you go there. Put in the gaps there, and if we can execute. That that and, and execute some traps, set some traps, and and catch them playing out from the back. Because for, for all for, as admirable as it is to want to play that way, it's um, it's difficult if you haven't got the level of players you can do that. And I'm not sure Southampton have got the level of players to do that at Premier League level. A bit like Burnley last year. So there is a there is a, a route there to a victory. Um, but yeah, you just got to you got to hope everybody does their jobs. If if we I always think this about Forest. If everybody does their jobs and everybody works hard and everybody plays to their 100% potential and leaves nothing out on the field, there's no reason why we can't win a football match. And that's against any team in the country. I've seen, I've seen it, I've seen it with my own eyes, Stephen. In the last two years, I've seen us beat Arsenal, I've seen us beat Liverpool, um, I've seen us beat Manchester United and Newcastle. And on those occasions, they've done every player and every single thing they can in their possible power: cut out the mistakes, run as hard as they can, run more than the opposition. And when that chance has come along, they've taken it. Um, and if we do that every single game, especially against team, teams on the bottom half of the table, we'll win those games. But it's just just that consistency from our team of being able to do that, concentrating for 90 minutes plus the added on time, cutting out the city mistakes. That's what costs us. Uh, but maybe a, a season wiser, a season more experienced in the Premier League, we'll see less of that this season, hopefully. Yeah, fingers crossed. It's a simple game, isn't it? Um, (laughs) So, Forrest, we know, will be without Danilo for the game at Southampton. He was stretched off eight minutes into the new season after landing awkwardly in the match against Bournemouth. And it's been confirmed that it is a broken ankle and he will undergo surgery, according to Nuno, in his press conference on Thursday. Um, yeah, it's a big blow to lose Danilo. He, it, it, he's another player who performs in fits and spurts, but when he's on song, he's great and he's really effective. And it's a shame to see him out of action so soon into the new season. Yeah, I, I always think we're a better team with him in the, in the side uh, than without him. He, he offers that sort of, uh, forward thrust that that other, some other of our midfielders don't don't naturally provide, and he's just got that quality to finish a chance and and play a killer ball. Um, and it was yeah a sickening blow really for that to happen. It just really took the shine off the start of the new season. Um, if there's a if there's a, if there's a silver lining to the cloud, um, if there's ever a time to break break your ankle, it's on the first day of the season. And it's in the year 2024 because at the moment, as as we are now with medical science, it, there's a pretty high chance that he's going to make a full recovery. Um, 
the surgery options there for him, the technology's there, and we've got the best ever um, level of medical help and support and physio support that um, history of, the history of mankind has ever known. So there's there's no reason why he shouldn't make a full recovery. Um, Thirty years ago, it, it may have meant the end of his career, but now I'm 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 confident that we'll see him back. It's going to take take a bit of time, maybe six months, maybe eight months. But I'm I'm pretty sure he'll be back this at some point this time this season. So um yeah, wish him all the best and um yeah, good luck, good luck with his surgery and, and the rehabilitation. Absolutely. So now for our final story that Jamie brought us, and it is reports that Forrest are showing an interest in re-signing Gonzalo Montiel before next week's deadline day. The Argentine right back spent last season on loan with Forrest from Sevilla before returning to the Spanish side earlier this summer. Montiel, due to injuries and, and, and other factors, was only able to make eight starts in the Premier League last season. He did chip in with three assists in all competitions. He won the World Cup with Argentina a couple of years ago and is thought to be worth about £9 million. Now, we know that Forrest do want to strengthen in defence, but it on on paper, this feels like a bit of a strange move because when Montiel was here, he couldn't really get a look in. So I'm a bit surprised that Forrest are now looking to maybe go and get him on a permanent deal. Well, yes, but you're forgetting our fetish with right backs. It's happened both both, in the last, both both times in the last two summer transfer windows where you signed more right backs and we know what to do with. Um, uh, the, so in that sense, it doesn't surprise me because that's the sort of thing Boris do. We, we, we love signing <laughs> right backs. Um, the, the, uh, we touched on this last week and, and we said that he, he was a, a very inconsistent player where he could be good one week and terrible the next made the sort of mistakes you wouldn't expect an international footballer, let alone a World Cup winner, to make. Um, um, and then on other days, he'd be brilliant. Um, it'd be, it'd be, I think we're all rather under, underwhelmed with him overall last season. The only reason I can think, apart from our right-back fetish, that we might sign him, is that there's a, a move on the table for Nico Williams or, or Lorena again. Because I, I can't understand. There's no other logical reason. I know logic and uh, transfers don't go hand to in hand at Forest, but I can't see why we'd be even showing the side a bit of interest in him if one of those wasn't uh, potentially about to move. Um, um, so yeah, that, that's the only thing I can think of why why we we'd be looking to sign him because um, his performances last season certainly didn't merit uh, an extension of his Forest career. And like our other stories, we will wait and see what happens on that one. I'm sure there will be plenty of movement in the transfer window, not just at Forest, but other clubs before it closes next week. So we will see what happens there. But let's leave Friday 5 there at that point. And my thanks to the Maradona of the Midlands for joining me for this edition. And thank you as well, listener, for joining us. We will be back in your feeds with our match report after the Southampton game. So if you're not subscribed already, make sure you are so that you don't miss any of our match reports and our roundups throughout the season. And until next time, we'll see you soon. is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. L is yep. for the way that's who you think it is. The Grimace Mug. The Hello Kitty keychain. Barbie herself. For a limited time, your favorite McDonald's collectibles filled with memories and magic are now on Collectible Cups. Get one of six when you order a collector's meal at McDonald's with your choice of a Big Mac or 10-piece McNuggets. Come get your cup while you still can. 
At participating McDonald's for a limited time while supplies last.